All right, everyone, welcome, welcome to another book review. Um, so I just finished a book and I thought I'd review it. Here we go. It's going to be so exciting for you, the viewer. Uh, okay, this is um, the third book that I've read by Dr. Richard Wiseman, although he's called Professor Richard Wiseman on some of his other books. So I don't know when he changed from a professor to a doctor. Um, this is the look factor change your look and change your life and this looks like a kind of like from the cover You'd think this was some kind of like hippie self-help like new age mystical thing um, But it's actually a study on look um, From a scientific perspective and a psychological perspective to see if um, It's possible to increase your look using purely scientific methods so it was a very interesting prospect um, <clears throat> so basically he starts out with the proposition of why is the why is the certain people who are unlucky and some certain people who are are lucky what um, is there any differences in the way they live their lives or is there actually uh, an actual like invisible like look factor does that actually exist and uh, you know is it possible to influence that so um he starts out his investigations i think he i, th I don't know if they put something out in the paper or in the, on tv asking for people to like volunteers for these experiments um whether they consider themselves lucky unlucky or you know somewhere in between and he got together about a thousand people of different different levels of look and studied their lives um and came to some interesting conclusions. So I will talk to you about what he found. <laughs> um, so this, as well as being a book review, I'm also just going to talk about the, the findings in the book and like the, the the nature of luck as as outlined in the book. So, uh, uh, God, I've, I fucking don't know why I started this review when I'm half asleep as usual. <laughs> I'm not very prepared. Um, so yeah. He starts out. What I like about Richard Wiseman is he always he's he's quite he's skeptical about the paranormal, but he's he's not cynical if you know what I mean. He, he always starts out. It's kind of like a a Fox Mulder type character. He wants to believe, and he always starts out with the in, with the idea that you know he's open minded enough to consider the possibility that these things he's studying are actually real phenomena. So in this study, he starts out. By testing the look of lucky and unlucky people, he makes them all buy a lottery ticket, and then checks how many won, how many lot, how many didn't win, and whether there's a difference between these lucky and unlucky people. Um, and actually, like, so I, I like the fact that he starts out. Most I think most scientists would just think, no, of course, luck doesn't really exist. Let's find out the reason why. But he actually starts out thinking, well, what if it does? We've got to rule that out. And he does the experiments and. Um, he finds out there isn't really any difference between lucky and unlucky people and whether they're going to win the lottery or not. It, there, there wasn't any. Um, there wasn't any difference really. It's all down to the way they live their lives and the way they perceive the luck in their lives. So uh, I think there's like four different principles. Um, obviously, the book is quite thick, and I can't go into massive detail about all of them. The main things are you you've got to if you if you want to live a lucky life. You've got to open yourself to opportunities in your life where luck can enter. So, if you if you do the same thing every single day, day in day out, talk to the same people, don't meet any new people, don't go anywhere new, um, go the same route to work every single day. Um, you are closing yourself off to new opportunities. The example he uses in the book is. If you think of an orchard full of apple trees and the apples are like lucky events in your life, um, so some people will go back to the same tree every single day picking apples and slowly the apples will dwindle away and these lucky opportunities will become less and less because you're just going to the exact same place every single day whereas lucky people live their lives much more like they're going to different places in the orchard at random every single day picking things and you know 
from one apple might be a golden one. You're, you're more likely to find it if you're going around to all these different trees. So um, there's lots of ways to increase this in your life. Just taking more more chances, living your life um, in more of a random way. Maybe like rolling a, like the dice man. If you've read the book, like rolling a dice to decide what you're going to do for the day. Um, doing things you would normally wouldn't try. Um, meeting new people, like starting up conversations with people as much as possible, like um, getting to know people, um, just just basically opening your life up to as many random chance encounters as you can will greatly increase your luck, apparently. Um, <clears throat> another thing is um, the psychological aspect. You you have got to perceive your life as if you're going to be lucky in the future so you you just think positively about what the outcome of events you think it's going to be positive you think you're going to be lucky it'll make you more likely to go out and try things instead of thinking no i'm i'm, I'm unlucky and it's not going to work out for me so you you just in general more likely to to go for it basically um as well as that is also the factor of if something unlucky happens to you the big difference between lucky and unlucky people is how they perceive those events and what they do about them. So if something bad happens to an unlucky person, they'll think, well, that's just my luck. And they won't bother, they won't try again. So they lose their job, they'll think, oh, what's no point going for another job. Um, whereas a, a lucky person will look on the bright side. Um, they'll think, well, it's just another opportunity to find a better job or something like that, you know. Um, they'll they'll also think about lucky people. Will also consider if something bad happens to them, they'll consider how much worse it could have been. So like they lose a leg, a non lucky person will think, "Fuck, I've lost a leg. How unlucky." Where, uh, whereas a, a lucky person will think, "Well, I've still got my other leg." Uh, what else was there? I can't remember all the principles in the book, but that that kind of gives you an idea of the the studies that he did and the his findings. Oh yeah. Um, Lucky people will trust their intuition a lot more, and um, their their subconscious will guide a lot of their life without them really realizing it. Um, they'll trust their gut instinct on things like business decisions, or when they meet someone, whether they want to be friends with them or whether they want them as a partner. Um, quite a lot of time, you might get a funny feeling about someone, but you won't know why, and it's because you're subconsciously picking up these signals. Um, that your conscious mind has missed. So, um, people who are lucky are more in tune with their intuition and will more likely trust it. And also, they will do things like meditation and mindfulness um, to increase their intuition and the way they, you know, they give they give themselves breathing time to think about a situation before jumping in. So um, that's a, apparently that's a big factor in luck is uh, the ability to sort of go away and think it, think it through and sort of quiet in your mind, not being sort of stressed and like oh I've got to do it now. Um, there was another factor and I can't really remember what it is. Um, turn your bad luck into good. Expect good fortune. Maximize your chance opportunities, and listen to your lucky hunches. Uh, yeah, so I think that yeah, I think those are all the things. But the book is very thick. Actually, I think quite a lot of this is filler. Um, he he gives like examples in each chapter of the different types of ways of increasing your luck, and then he gives you like multiple chapters, multiple chapters of examples of how these have affected real life people. Like he gives you real life case studies of people, how they perceive the luck in their lives, what kind of lucky and unlucky events have occurred. Um, and I, I, after a while I started to feel like he was just padding out a lot of the chapters because I think the book could be made quite thin really you could just say right I found this about luck you, you know this is the difference between lucky and unlucky people but he goes and it, a lot of the examples are quite useful in like outlining what he's trying to say but I, after a while I started to feel like there was quite a lot of them there was maybe too many too much padding and I started to get a bit sort of like, ah, oh, come on. You could make this book half the size if you didn't pad it out of all these examples. And uh, So I, I like this book. Out of the Richard Wiseman books that I've read, this is probably my least favourite one. Um, it's interesting. 
it actually made me think more about my life and the way I live it than other books and it might actually have improved might actually improve my life in much more than his other books that I've read um, I've read Quirkology and Paranormality uh, Paranormality is definitely my favorite so far I would recommend that one first and foremost um, just he looks at different paranormal phenomena with the same open-minded but also skeptical skeptical but not cynical outlook he, he looks at the possibility that these things are real and if there's any sort of scientific explanation behind them instead and uh, considers both sides and it's very very interesting book i recommend that if you're interested in paranormal skepticism and this one also just um if you if you feel you live an unlucky life i definitely recommend give this book a go he's, he gives you examples and also gives you exercises for to try out in your own life um, like he, he recommends at the start of the book to start a, a look diary where you, you write down all your lucky events and unlucky events and he, he gives you like questionnaires to tick like how un, how lucky or unlucky you feel in different parts of your life and um, you're supposed to keep this diary as you're reading the book and see if your luck increases by the end and I didn't do that, I, I just read the book cover to cover basically, I didn't really want to partake in that but it's it gave, definitely gave me a lot of ways of thinking about how I approach things in my life and um, you know I don't I don't meet a lot of new people um, apart from in my work and, you know I don't go I don't go out to a lot of new places and you know I probably don't take as many opportunities as I could there's lo lots of ways I could change my own look in life um, so yeah I, I yeah, give this book a go if you. It sounds like something you're interested in. It's a good book. Like I say, it's not my favourite book of Richard Wiseman's, but he's still. They're all good books. You know what I mean? It's just like it's the worst of a good lot. I'd I'd say so far. I've got another one, fifty nine seconds, which is uh, somewhere. I don't know. Probably somewhere. Oh, here's a uh, paranormality. I brought that one out because this is my favourite. I definitely uh, recommend this. Anyway, that's my book review. I will try and do them as I finish books. I'll try and try and uh, do a review on them. Um, at the moment, I'm reading uh, Matrix Energetics. It's a bit of a new age type of book about like quantum physics and self healing. Um, I'm reading The Magic of Alistair Crowley. Well, I've only one read the introduction so far. And I'm reading Investigations of a Dog by Franz Kafka, which is a really tiny, thin book, but interesting so far. Um, all right. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed the review. And um, see you next time. <laughs>